through some of the stuff that we've been doing, looking at Twitter, uh, some of the stuff we've been doing, bring your own device. Mike's just taken all this wholeheartedly and just run with it. So things like our teaching and learning communities, which are meetings every half term that we talk about teaching and learning, um, solar taxonomy, and this bring your own device. Mike has now amalgamated all that and is using it all the time. And this hopefully will be a really great example for you to see some innovative teaching and learning that goes on at Finland Park. It's a really refreshing partnership for uh, lesson observation for real because it's about digital technology that I'm particularly bad at, so that's a real challenge. Okay. Um, it's, it's really about learning. Okay. What's the impact of the teacher and the teaching strategies? So I'm very fascinated by the use of digital uh, technology. What we need to be looking for, because that's the discussion we'll have after 30 minutes or so, is progress. Okay, how much pupils, how much progress have pupils made from the start of the lesson through to the 30 minutes? We're going to be looking at the depth of learning. Okay, I'm sure it won't be, but in a bad lesson, you know that you can make really fast pace of progress, but you skip. Okay, there's that, that stone going across that pond. There's no real depth of learning. And the final one is engagement how engaged are the learners, and thank you for doing over time the sixth form at Finham Park. I know we are paying you a little bit of money, <laughs> <laughs> but we'll keep that between us. Um, 30, 35 minutes, if you could think about those three things, just to repeat, engagement, <coughs> progress, depth of learning. The iPads, fascinating, let's see if they contribute to those three things. I'm going to introduce uh, Mike Gunn, Head of Creative Arts, who's kindly offered to do this. Just shared with me, he should have had a lesson observation today. It was cancelled because of this, which is happening to be filmed as well. So no pressure. <laughs> no pressure. Thank you. Thank you. Can I, uh, I, I want to start with a little bit of context for you. Um, but can I also make a request, please? I, I want you to take a good hard look at your expectations of this lesson and just dial them down by about 80%. Because at the moment it's not feeling like it's going to be my job. Um, to give you an idea, this is a mixed class. There are some year 12s and some year 13s in here, so they are all at different stages of film studies. Um, it's a year 13 class primarily, and we are looking at cinema and emotional response to cinema. Um, we have been looking in particular at the way that certain techniques create certain emotional responses and we're trying to get the students to think about how combinations of techniques work. And the way that we're going to do it today is based on something called solo taxonomy. So you'll see them all doing different tasks. Now, unfortunately, the iPad is not a particularly good, um, what should we call it, spectator sport. So what I'm going to do is, because there's a lot of independent work, I'm going to say to you guys at certain points that if you'd like to come up sort of five, maybe ten maximum at a time and just have a look at what the students are doing, I'm hoping they'll be all right with that. You guys all right? Yeah. Okay. And that will just give you the opportunity to see what the different tasks are, what some of the resources are that are out on there, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So we'll make a very quick start. These are your learning objectives, guys. Have a look at them very carefully. They're going to inform where you go this lesson. And I want you to think, whereabouts should you be for your target group? Okay? Should you be on the must? Should you be on the should? Should you be on the could? Read them very carefully. That's what I'm going to measure your progress by today. Happy? Okay. Can you guys go to Socrative, please? I want you to log in. The room number is 2667. I'm going to give you three minutes to complete the baseline quiz. For those of you who are watching, this is what I can see from my iPad. I can see how many students have logged into the room. I can see that half of them haven't already. 
Uh, I can see the amount of uh, correct answers they've got on the multiple choice questions. However, there are a series of graded questions here which are taking them from one objective to the next. So they should, if they're doing well, be able to answer the more difficult questions. If they're just starting off, or if they're in the year 12, who so haven't covered a lot of this work, then they will probably only get the first couple right. on each table. That's that. And I want you to try and tell me the, the levels go from there up there to there. So I want you to pick a task that you have a look at five, six different tasks, okay? We've got the uh, unistructural one there, that's the, the kind of beginner's task, then the multi, then the relational one, then we've got two extended abstract tasks up here, okay? And just to show you very quickly what they are, if you think you're at unistructural and you've had difficulty with that quiz, then you're probably doing that activity. By the way, don't worry if I'm rushing through this, it's all written on the, on the paper with the resources there. Okay? You're going to test yourself on those. If you get the 80% of those correct, then you can move on. But you've only got 15 minutes for that task. Next, the multi-structural activity, that's over here. You're going to label at least 10 of the techniques that you've talked about in a scene from Schindler's List. Okay? Now, if any of you can't get the, um, the scene already on there, then just go and get the aura over there. Okay? Just put your, you know how to do this, put your iPad up on it and it will bring it up straight away, okay? And you've got 15 minutes for that and that will be a peer assessed task, okay? But I will check that. 
If you feel you've, you're, you're beyond that, then you're on relational. And you can use either line away or explain everything. But what you're going to do is watch the clip. And then you're going to talk about, or write down, what you feel the emotional effect of the techniques is. And I want you to make explicit links between the specific techniques and what it's causing. Okay? And then, finally, you've got two extended abstract tasks. These are the most difficult ones. Okay? But both of them focus on the same question. If you were Spielberg and you were trying to achieve the same effect, how could you do it differently? So you can change the mise en scène, you can change the sound, you can change anything you like. And I'm going to ask you to give that commentary by the end. That's going to be the full 25 minute task. Okay? You can do it as a storyboard or as a telegram. Are there any questions before you guys start? I'm going to look at your quiz in a second, and then I'm going to see if I think you're in, uh, roughly in the right group or not, and then basically you're moving through. To show progress today, you go from one task into the next task, because they're at a higher level. Okay? So, stand up, have a read, sit yourself down very, very quickly, and get cracking with the task you think you're on. Don't ask Siri for the answers. <laughs> for the benefit of the audience, these were the questions that they were asked. And these were the answers that they, they gave me. So you can hopefully see, or I can see, what sort of a, a level they're at.
for those of you who are in the audience, those are what the solo taxonomy levels mean in practical terms. Can I ask uh, my colleagues here to make your way down to your chair so I can just invite some others? is less than I would have expected because normally there's a lot of talk at the beginning of a lesson where there was none in this lesson but they seem to know what they're doing and they seem to be able to peer, peer assist so that's quite interesting. Implied, yeah because you've got the, 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 the chorus. 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 Chorus, yeah. Um, sing chorus singing. Yeah. yeah. So no, it's not it chorus, it's um, choir. Choir. That's choir that's singing. Yeah, that's the right. I know we'd get the right word in there, <laughs> in there eventually. Okay. Yeah. Um, that's that's right. Right. Yeah. 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 And his expression, expression. This gives the audience an indication of how they should be like. So, would you say you're mainly describing them? You begin to explain it. Yeah, yeah. And then you bring it to explain it when the audience affects it. Um, that's basically my task at the moment. I don't have a problem with you doing yeah. it if you feel comfortable handling it.
So are you actually dividing that between each of the different micro Yeah, so I've got camera angles and I've got shots. No, no, no. You're Sound. working on relation. So for each of these, I want you to be working on the audience effect as well. No, no, yeah. Terms. I'm going to number them and then put them across there and do that. Uh, along the side. So what's the effect of the wide shot? What's the effect of the reaction shot? Mm, yeah. So do you just put it next to the shoe hand music? Do you put something next to it and then do... Yeah, if you're at this level, you ought to be you ought to be able to describe the music, describe the technique, tell me whether it's diegetic or non-diegetic, and then go connotations. What what are the connotations? charging station like that and after every lesson they're put in there so every lesson they're all charged so we have our with battery. Okay folks, I'm going to give you five minutes. Yeah. What other subjects do you do? Um, I do history and sociology. Okay, so they're similar kind of things. Yeah, like they, they all tend to link why and yeah. all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Like especially like with what we're doing now, like history really, really helps. Yeah, with all the shins and this stuff. Yeah, like this is like my favourite movie so I'm really excited yeah. for this. Oh good. Yeah. And then, did you even year 13? Yes. Yeah. So did, have you found it's got harder this year than last year? It's, yeah, it's definitely more challenging because we're doing emotional responses, which is some, because it's really hard to know your own emotions while you're watching yeah, another film. Exactly, like, yeah. But it's And you really can't watch films the same now, can you? No, it's, no, it's I like, like that as well. I, I keep trying to analyse it and yeah. it's just like... <laughs> oh, that's good then. No, yeah. Really, really good. I, I like the way you've expressed it. It's, it. Sometimes it's just a matter of expressing it as concisely as possible in an essay. Yeah. You've got to do that through a metaphor, that's fine. We're having the three different groups and that they can obviously have the questionnaire to choose the group and then, then they're sort of, it's differentiated already. And then they can sort of take responsibility of their learning. Yeah. So, but, um, I'm doing my master. I'm doing P and PGC at the moment, so I've got to do my master's essay on solo. So. I'd be moving you on, Cara, and I'd be moving you guys on. You guys would need more time on this, okay? Definitely need some more time. Okay, but for the benefit of everybody else, by the end of the lesson, I will be running the same quiz, slightly modified, with slightly more difficult questions, but again reflecting the same levels of the solo taxonomy, so that I can tell whether the students had actually gained a deeper understanding of what they were doing throughout the lesson. Okay. Do you want to? Yeah, uh, just talking to Mark here. Mark's, um, <coughs> I'm really pleased to say, Mike's prepared to take part in the question and answers and the discussion, which I think would be something really positive. And, um, you're going to ask the six formers if they're prepared to do that? Yeah, guys, if any of you, if people want to ask you questions about what you've just experienced, what the learning's like, etc., etc., if, if any of you have to go somewhere, that's absolutely fine. Um, but if any of you want to stay, then I think they'd be really grateful to ask you a few questions. We'll do your bit first and then they can grill me afterwards. You all right with that? Okay. Well, I'm, I'm going to disturb you. I'm just wondering if it's better if we can just go to one side and at the end there. So if we have these chairs empty, do you mind getting that one there? Thank you. Okay, thank you for that. It just might be easier to do it like this than uh, in the U-shape. A uh, very different lesson. Uh, as a trainee of the inspector, and I could pick up certain elements that I'm going to be all ears today to listen to what the students have to say. You know what? I'm going to change the format of this to spread up into yourselves as well because you were in games for the first time looking at what the children were actually doing. That's unique to the sessions we've run so far. I'm just wondering what you made of progress. How much progress did the children make in that 30, 35 minutes? In such a situation, you always go to the colleague from your own school. Tell me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I thought it was interesting. I mean, the way you sort of split them up into, into three different areas, I thought it was quite cool. Um, I guess in terms of progress, actually, how much progress was actually being made by each individual table, and actually how 
I'm going to ask some of the people down, I won't name the table, um, but they said, actually, I'm quite comfortable with this. Um, it's not too hard and it's not too easy. And that kind of, so actually, you really pushing yourself and moving yourself forward. Sometimes um, when a student tells me they're comfortable, they're wrong. And sometimes when, when they're doing a task that they think is comfortable, that gives me the opportunity to see whether actually they're correct in feeling uncomfortable. And as I say, in an hour's lesson, I would be expecting all of them to move table at least once, if not twice. For, for, for some of the, the, the quicker tasks down there, I'd, I'd be hoping that they would move twice. Yeah, the comments you made to me was that you were doing the most difficult task, okay? You're going to, if I recall correctly, you know, you'd get into the skills about identifying the terminology, you're getting into the understanding about the analysis at the level you're getting at, it's the effective domain, it's about the emotions of the audience, so very high level. And you said you find that quite challenging, I'm sorry, I don't know. It's yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like it's challenging, but in a good way. Like it's really getting me to think about it, and it's just, and it's it's just something that really like gets gets me going. It's, it's good. And just out of curiosity, have you done the other tasks first? Um, You've gone through the other tasks. Um, I've I've not. I was starting to do that one. Yeah. But um, but can I answer that? Yeah, yeah. The initial Socrative uh, quiz. Emma's answered that. And has answered how the level of detail was yeah. significantly further on from everybody else. Mm -hmm. And because the, the questions were pitched at each level mm -hmm. for the tasks, then I knew that if she got the most difficult one of those in real detail, she would be going on the list. Okay. Okay. Colleagues, I'm just going to ask you to turn to your neighbour. Sure. I want you to. There was a question. So. Um, you said that, you know, in an hour's lesson they would have moved on and that would have shown progress. Is that enough for offset? You know, that they know it's going to happen rather than it happen in the bit they were there. Would offset want to know that the progress happened afterwards? Mm -hmm. <coughs> in, in a lesson observation, right, it's a snapshot, isn't it, really? It, you, you know, it's 25 minutes is the key. After 25 minutes you can get up and go out. Before 25 minutes, you shouldn't really be grading the lesson. Mm -hmm. And you can only really judge on what you see. You know, I know as a head teacher the number of times when colleagues at Westwood have come in and said, You should have seen the second half, it was fantastic, you know? And, and I can bear that in mind because I can see their results. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I've got that overview which the officer team pick up to look at your results. You know, so if Mike said that to me, you know, that unfortunately the second half of the lesson was going to be totally inadequate and you're just lucky to see an outstanding bit, then I would want to go and see his results. And if his results are outstanding, therefore there must be a close link with the quality of the teaching as well. But we hear it, we hear it all the time. But you can't really take too much notice of it. You wouldn't go retrospectively in any bit and say, the teacher said it was outstanding, but you just didn't see the best bit. But yes, absolutely. Yes, please. This is more of a technology question. Um, how are you going to show, that, how will they show that they're focused in it? Do you know, how do you see what they So the quiz down there is kind of self-marking. So if he gets 8 out of, out of 10, as long as I've checked the def that he's got the definitions correct in the first place, I know he's made progress, he's, he's got those right, he's moved on. With these guys, I asked them to peer assess, and I was just leaning over to make sure that they were peering at, uh, peer assessing correctly. With these guys, I would expect them to email that to me. And with Emma's task, Emma, Emma's task was she had to present something. Now, I would actually use a student who's that level to present to the rest of the class, and she would uh, create a small two, three minute movie, a commentary on the piece itself, which allows me, which would allow me at the end of the lesson to uh, play it to the rest of the class and see if that answered any of their misconceptions. Right. So I, I'd be using someone like that actually to, to teach the rest of the Yes, I'm sure. Okay, I'm going to ask you just to, to your neighbour, okay, there's questions buzzing around in my head, because the old fashioned word would be differentiation. Okay, Ofsted will say, did the task meet the individual ability of the child? Uh, in my teacher training days, it was differentiations of differentiation by task. 
Was that effective? Okay. Did every child make the progress that they could have been expected to make given the task that they were given? Just with your name. Even if you don't know them, it's, it's not Facebook or Twitter. Just talk to your name. Just talk to your name. <laughs> 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 Guys, um, just need to pull that together. I'm going to ask you. Nice, and ask your first questions to the students because they just might have to go off and go home and get your tea or something like that. Okay, and then we'll, then we'll bring Mike in and uh, talk about the effectiveness of the differentiation. Did it promote effective learning? Did it hold something back at the level you want to move on a bit faster? Or not? But from yourself, so the questions you'd like to ask the students, please. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, when you pick your task, whichever task it was you picked, how confident were you that you were in the right place? Um, when I was uh, going over the, the classroom, I guess you'd call it, reading the different tasks, I was looking for something that I didn't already know, but I would like to know. So in the task that I ended up doing was a analysis of a scene from Schindler's List, and I've seen this in before because we've been set home to watch the entire film, but I wasn't, on I wasn't too sure on the audience effect. So it's something that still challenges me, but yet I also have a link to, this, like, to the, like, the first task. So I can uh, say the key techniques you use and the connotations of them, but then I have to challenge myself in order to find out the audience effect. So it's still something that I need to almost learn whilst doing the task. That's kind of what I look for. Did, did learning happen? <laughs> 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 there was a couple more questions. Please. Well, it's actually a very similar question, but it's relating to the activity that you did at the start, the little book questions. How useful were the questions you had at the start to help you judge the level that you were working at? I'm thinking that uh, it would be mainly for you to check where, what our learning level is about. It's, it's so maybe that he can also help us along a little bit. So that. Um, like if he's the one who checks the answers in the end, and if he says that they're of the standard, um, then they will be placed appropriately. Is sort of the idea I'm guessing. At. I'm speaking to you. Yeah, I mean, uh, to be honest, it's I, I did what you guys thinking about what level. Uh, what Adam said before was was significant in that he picked a task that he felt was yeah. going to be it's just a bit, at the edge. It's almost like a bit <coughs> as well. Yeah. yeah, I think it's like also dependent on how hard we. Like found the questions, so with like um, the one, the ones that were multiple choice. Um, if like we found them quite hard to answer, then I think that kind of gave us like a picture of like where we would be. What did you think? Well, I couldn't see all the questions. We never see fairly confident as though we're doing tasks. So I just had a conversation with Mike, and it took me back to a lesson I observed um, last week in my own school, and the teacher didn't assess the prior learning. I didn't think. It seems to know the prior learning and the prior knowledge of the pupils. But she'd just given out the exercise books, which had just been mocked. So the whole point was she knew the pupils' prior knowledge in very fine detail. So it's the thing, if you are involved in lesson observation, just to be cautious, because there's more than one way of saying on a green card or a red card, do you know if that's true, is that false, or putting five fingers up, if you look, you know, there's more than one way of doing that as well. And I'm, I was hesitant about it because I'm not sure if it increased the pace of learning or if it put it back. And clearly with a small group, Mr. Gunn would know in detail, I would say, where the pupils are as well. I think one, one of the other uh, aspects of this particular lesson is because I've got certain students who are in year 12 and certain ones in year 13, I suspected that in combination I would probably have the year 12s further down here. But I just need to check with that, and Jack, who is one of my year 12s, was way past that. And I thought, I, I would have suspected it, but because he's never seen the movie before, or I didn't think he'd seen the movie before, I needed a quiz like that just to tell me for definite and shift him on a little bit. Anybody want to? Can I just ask basically the reverse question of what you've been asked? <laughs> Why didn't you choose one of the two toughest tasks? Nice. Um, um, 
Back to Spurs or whatever. Mm. Um, <laughs> I didn't pick the next step because I wasn't sure on the audience effects. So I couldn't go any further than that because I wasn't sure on the second step. Because like, I'm guessing there's three steps for mm. that task. So it's like, you need to be able to analyse the scene, say what the audience effects are, and then say how you would do it. And if I couldn't do the audience effect, there would be no point in doing the task because it would be almost too much to do within something. It's, it's almost blocking me from, from moving further on. And that's a bit too easy. Yeah, and that was... <laughs> it, it's, it's like, if, if Sarah has a feeling that something we're doing is a bit too... Um, <coughs> sort of belittling our knowledge, it's, if this, we're beyond that, then he will confront us and he will say, I think you should be doing something a bit better. Yeah. Don't like the word confront. <laughs> 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 um, it, like, before, when I read the easier tasks, like, um, this is stuff that like, I'd already done at like, a lower level, and I know at um, the level that um, we're at now, we're supposed to be doing like, emotional responses, and this like the earlier two levels didn't focus on emotional responses. Like these were like it says that these must have go above the grade D in the exam and to get above the grade D you need to know um, the emotional response kind of question. Sorry, what some of you may not have seen, you, you probably all saw the task sheets, but on the back was the uh, the relationship of the level with kind of grades. So it's not it, it's not direct because it's solo text only it can be used throughout the whole of the thing, but I was giving them an idea, so for instance, I said um, the relational task, because these tasks involve you applying your knowledge, they have a potential to get grade C or B. Higher marks would be awarded to applied answers which incorporated film terminology accurately, were precise and well communicated, and contained reference to theoretical frameworks such as audience theories. So they can use those as well to work out whether they think they're more or less in like that. I'd just like to ask you about the wider concept. Do you do, whilst you do other A levels, do you use this kind of method in all of them? And then which ones do you prefer? Mm -hmm. um, I definitely prefer this digital technology learning. I mean, especially with this, with this generation, it's, it's all centred around technology. <coughs> so this is something that we're comfortable with, that we know how to use already. And I think it engages us a lot more in comparison to just reading out a textbook. You know, it, yeah, it, exactly. It's, it's it's not as repetitive, and I think it uh, I think it gives us a, a bit more freedom in how we learn. Yeah. This also allows us to do independent research as well. So um, if like for in the lesson, then Sarah asks us to do a task by ourselves, and then we can like yeah, there's a lot more things. That different generation and what I'm wondering about is the, the emotional, so we're going to go back to this emotion of about people's emotions and emotional reaction of the audience and you, you, you were very intent and the teachers created uh, commitment from you and engagement for you, from you as well. I'm just wondering would you not have preferred somebody on the other side to talk to you about that? Opposite, opposite. Is it like working? Well, I think it's it, this way. It's easier to get a lot of your own ideas and then have your own creative vision because, in the end, you're in, when you're in the exam, you're not going to be able to have that, and you're going to need to get like ideas from yourself. So I think it's good for me to do it independently, so it can help my learning. Um, like, and as good as it as it is to do group work, it yeah. sometimes is quite nice to sort of have your own yeah, opinions and, and if they are wrong you can learn yourself that and it was nobody else's fault it was your own yeah, yeah. And, and you can build on that i think but you get that opportunity yeah. 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 explore yeah. emotions yeah. 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 i think Sorry. it's also a big point the fact that because in like emma said in the exam we are on our own with a pen and paper and it's up to us to know what we feel towards the film and i think if you're doing like if, if you're doing like an independent task it helps you develop your ideas a lot more clearly and then usually we'll come into the group and we'll express our own emotions towards the film, towards certain scenes, with the whole group or with a smaller group. So then we can all discuss what we all thought, so then see if some of the ideas were, were similar or different to each other, and then go further in with the analysis. And okay, I'm just checking we're going to spend all evening with your hood up and face down into that. What the you want this? We very often start with the bridge when we get in there. Over there, and you're getting 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 over there,
I'm still going to go back to differentiation by task. We have here 12 pupils over here. I think you were identifying 12 terms, were you? Uh, yeah, Karamos. So 12 terms yeah. from that, which is I mean, obviously a deliberate at a much lower level than the emotion response here as well. Does that engage all learners at a level which is challenging? Or should we just turn to that? Does that engage all learners at a level which matches their ability? Matches their ability. Yeah, absolutely. been doing it in sections so like I've been doing sections for different shots yeah so yeah so that's what I've just been doing now so you choose you create your own avatar yeah you create your own avatar so like you have options of like to change it how you look at like how you want it to look and all that and then that's you so. So do you do that a lot? Is this like this replaces a presentation, so to speak? Um, sometimes it can. Like sometimes we do actually do proper presentations. But if if Sir just wants to set us a task and there's not time to you know actually go and create a presentation, this can help quite a lot of the time. And you know obviously it's just a commentary, so we can talk over the scene and like it's it's just been done for us. This is the kind of A-grade uh, thinking outside the box table where they've got to apply their learning to complete new situations and hypothetical situations. I think the majority of the students would be getting there by a certain time of the year, but I don't think it would be appropriate to push them early in the year if I didn't think that they were up to uh, you know, doing these tasks absolutely solidly. So as far as I'm concerned, my job is to make sure that throughout the year they're progressing all, all the way through. And I'll, I'll get that sense from essays and the, you know, things that they hand in more formally and things like that. But I, I will be pushing them on. I can see 
see that obviously as they go through as well, the applications that you wanted them to use are getting obviously more challenging as well. Is that sort of like the basic skills that in year 12, for example, would you run through with them? This is what you do when each of these before obviously setting tasks that are then specific. How would you do that as a No. How do you kind of let them my, know how to do it? My view on how to do it is that I don't want to waste learning time yeah. doing that. So what we would do is, if I show you, um, they, I will either set them homework to do that uh, learning via a tutorial that we will have on our website, or uh, around our room we have, um, oops. <coughs> we have these little signs up here. And all the students would do if they were desperate for a tutorial. Is they would go In this video, we're going to look at an app called Explain Everything for the iPad. And I would be expecting them to show that level of independence. Um, I make it clear from GCSE onwards, to be honest, that I don't... It, it's... It's a waste of my time to teach software, which is relatively simple. I don't ch choose anything that's massively complex, but it's a waste of learning time, and it's part of their preparation. And one of the things I, I like to do is kind of flip the classroom and say, your homework is preparation for the next lesson. Yeah. So you, you've got to come prepared, otherwise you're going to waste your own time. Yeah. And do you say you can start that key stage Sort of yeah. Introducing it yeah. Uh, to be honest, we, I, we do enrichment classes in Key Stage Three, and we started there. Yeah. They, they're used to the idea that homework is being prepared for the next lesson, and if that's how to use a piece of software, then that's how to use a piece of software. Okay. Thank you. Any other points? Um, I, I like <coughs> the way you just use the lesson. Um, how often do you do? It? Um, do you mean for technology? <coughs> for anything. Do I set you guys stuff to prepare for the lesson? Actually, it was. Yeah, quite a lot. It's a source in which to read yeah. in order to learn the next lesson. So it could be a page or about uh, key theories that yeah, theories that we need to learn about in order to apply them to our so text for the next. Lesson. Maybe he'll give us the, um, uh, the basically, uh, what's it, Laura Mulvey's uh, male variant. Oh, yeah. like, he'll give us, oh, well, that's fine, he'll give us um, um, basically a, a leaflet or a, a, document, a, a document to read uh, over the week or uh, the day and show them. Then we'll, then we'll work on, the, on that in the lesson, we'll dissect it, we'll talk about what's going on and what they're talking about. And, yeah, it's quite important. Yeah, if, if you haven't done our homework, then you basically yeah. can't do the lesson. Yeah, you can't yeah. access the yeah. lesson. And, and you can do it the other way around. You can read the thing in the lesson. Yeah. The other way. And what, one of the things about that is that we... Um, not doing the homework, that's criminal. But not understanding it, that's fine. I, either, I, I will say to them that I either want you coming in understanding or coming with questions. Because that allows me to differentiate right from the start. Okay, who had problems with the homework? Let's come over here. Who didn't have problems with the homework? Right, you're starting on this task and then you're going to work towards that task. So it means I don't have to, I don't find myself wasting time talking to the whole class when half of them have got it anyway and are just dying to move on. Okay. <coughs> Can we just spend the last few minutes talking about the use of the digital technology? <coughs> You know, this is a, an old geography teacher who led the way in Warwickshire with a BBC satellite dish which never worked on the BBC computers. But are they gimmicky? Could that lesson have been delivered in a better way without the technology? Are they integral, integral to the lesson? Uh, and could you use it in your own subject? What have we learned today about the use of digital technology, which is what the how it was advertised as well. A couple of minutes and we will finish by just after quite fast.
disadvantage. Yeah, for some of the students, actually, and I don't think that's fair. The thing is, the technology is here. We use it so much at weddings. You can push on with it, certainly in our subject. There's masses that you can do, and that allows them to work independently at their own speed in a yeah. way that they like. Yeah. But well, the reason I don't do it is because it takes so long to the system. Yeah. 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 Together then, please. Thank you. Points from yourself. Just considering the use of this type of technology, was it a benefit to that person? Yes. Absolutely not. I also had a great comment from one of the students as well, which was, um, yes, the iPads are great, but I wouldn't exactly like to try and apply them to every single lesson. I wouldn't like to try and put an iPad in a maths lesson, for example. Uh, just, sorry, but yeah. <laughs> I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't like to try and have to use an iPad in a maths lesson where it is a lot easier just to be able to write down the equations, whereas uh, the iPad might misunderstand the equation and then get frustrated and feel like you're my okay. I'm going to take that as technology being used to enhance the learning rather than just as a gimmick and it's a nice thing to do. I've got a couple of points from the 40%. Question, is that um, I was going to say, I think in my class, you need a, it probably is useful. I can't imagine how you could use it Down, but I'm just going to pick up three questions, I think, and then I'm just going to give summarise where I think I'm coming from. I'm going to ask this one. Uh, sorry, just I, was remember just, this. I was just going to ask how many subjects at your school currently are using iPads, sir? And is it what levels are they using that? 
Sorry. So the iPad in, in, in Venom at the moment, what subjects are you using? Sort of um, okay, uh, science have some. English have some. Maths? No. Um, media have some. IT. IT. Um, and there are a lot of yeah, there are a lot of other departments that are using some form of tablet. Um, but the the philosophy that I'm kind of trying to take forward is bring your own device. Uh, as a school, we can't afford to, to give all of our students these. However, they all have a device in their pockets, which is probably perfectly <coughs> adequate. So um, a lot of what we're trying to do, most of the stuff on there, was stuff that was either web based or available on Android. Uh, and our teams. Okay. I was going to ask in PCH4 format where the classes are larger, probably in front of do you find it's quite hard to monitor what the students are watching sometimes? As obviously the monitor is in close you can't stand behind you, you can't stand over them. I just know that in teaching photography, even when I'm rotating the class, you know, like YouTube, <laughs> turn the monitor off for a moment, look this way. That's, is that um, it's, is it hard to always get their attention to keep It's perhaps that? more difficult, but I think in exactly the same as you manage the way as you manage behaviour in a classroom, if you set up the protocols um, and then you I, I mean I, I, if somebody is watching something inappropriate in my lesson, as far as I'm concerned, I've got a behaviour issue, not a tech issue. Uh, and it, it, that might sound quite trite, but you know, if I want everyone's attention, I'll say, right, switch off the iPad to put the cover on. Um, if, uh, and I'll, I'll be able to, to monitor. Yeah, it does require close monitoring, but at the same time, I should be monitoring them that closely anyway. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, final point. guys make their notes on. Uh, this is a program called Evernote uh, and it's, it's really really easy for typing but it has several advantages. I, I don't think you could type something and it wouldn't be any different than uh, handwriting <coughs> said. For instance if I'm writing something on the board if we're brainstorming something we're just getting ideas down I don't then want to waste time with them writing everything down so they'll come and take a picture and it'll go straight in the note. And similarly, uh, the fact that they can tag their notes with, okay, we've been talking about emotional response, but there may be something here which is important in a couple of their other exam uh, questions or on different films, and they can tag them with, you know, 50 different labels if they want. And that means that if they want to, to, to cross-reference and do a search for, right, find me everything on cinematography, then all the notes can be sort of cross-indexed, if you like. Evernote. Evernote. I know you said that, but I'm just intrigued about the learning journey. If somebody was coming to look through 
the evidence that you are creating over time? How would an Ofsted inspector reference the, the progress if it's all yeah. task oriented yeah. through and yeah. your marking? How how's that? So that's, uh, that, that was a very difficult one for me to, to come up. Uh, I would say we started um, by doing a lot of things on Evernote for note taking. And while it's all shareable, um, these guys will very often tweet me notes and, and things like that, which is a nice easy way of sharing notes amongst the class. For marking, it's slightly more difficult. Um, there is a way on there that you can record yourself giving verbal feedback. So I'll do that on Evernote. But I'm now found a system whereby Evernotes are for their notes and for very quick comments from me. If they do any formal writing, it will be in Google Docs and I'll write comments on Google Docs. And so if Ofsted came in, I would, I, we've just had a situation here where we've had into deep and work tools and maths, head of maths asked me, can I see all the books? So I just shared the folder with them and said, yeah, there you go. That's everything they've, they've written that's been formally assessed with all my comments in the side and they'll be able to see dated comments. It, it's a good point, you know, the, the, it goes back to the comment there about, well, how do you see progress? And the query I had was a query that somebody else made in the audience about the movement of the child, the pupil down there on the level two one. Okay, my first question would have been to that child, are you here for a full hour or are you going to move up? And you, and you get that evidence, you get that evidence from the child. And if you don't get it, then you're complicit in not observing lessons properly. If you just sit there with a notepad, you could easily think that that child's not really achieved, they've been put into an easy task and they're stopping their own lesson. Asking the child what usually happens, or I usually move up to that table and move on to that task. So that lies that theory. Now, I, looking at that, I'm just going to draw it together. Um, I, I think that those children's individual needs have been met. Okay, it was quite clear, very flexible approach to meeting those needs through differentiation by outcome and by task. That sounds contradictory, I'm just going to leave it there for the moment, all right? Uh, if you want to speak to me afterwards, that's fine. I'm impressed with Mike's intervention, all right? There's some skillful questioning and intervention, okay? Understated, which is great, okay? I can do understated. But actually, he did move the learning on from time to time. He knew the pupils, and it was able to go to the individual pupils and encourage them to move on, to move to the next task as well. I thought that was really good. You know, that digital technology, the engagement, is there for us all to see. Okay, complete loyalty to the subject, to the content, to the teacher, to the engagement. Okay, and my questions, my concerns about have you ever talked to your friends in that sense? Clearly you've, you've mentioned that, you're not working in isolation all the time. You see the benefits of peer-to-peer -peer relationships as well as outstanding uh, teacher-to-peer relationships. And I'm going to say that in those terms I'd be scribbling down that in this instance I would have observed quite inspirational but also well-judged teaching strategies. Okay, And I'm going to leave it there. Okay, I'm going to thank you for being uh, here tonight, okay? I have always admire the teachers turning up to these sessions. What a delight. This is a refreshing approach to lesson observation for real that we've actually got the live students answering the questions as well and taking part in the debate. Thank you. All right, you've been fabulous. Uh, I'm not being patronising, right? <laughs>
So how did you find that the use of the iPads like helped the session? I thought it was really good because you're all connected but still independent um, and it allows obviously you to see where you've been, where you are and where you're going without lots of faffy bits of paper um, and all of that and it also shows that you've got a range of skills with regards to the apps that you can use um, in any job sort of that you would go into or at a university it shows different skills that you could further onto with, outside of just a film course. So I thought it was really good. Yeah. How do you feel the session went? How do you feel being watched by everybody? And... Session went fine. Watching by everybody, not so fine. <laughs> no, it was, it's all right because by the time I got you guys sat down and got thinking about it as actually this is just a normal lesson, then it was at, at one point because we'd invited the teachers up to have a little look, I was almost like, get out of my way, I need to teach this person something. Yeah. But, you know, apart from that, as soon as I, I, I was sort of in that zone, it was, it was fine. I thought it went really, really well. Yeah, I, I really liked it. I was actually really liking the task that I was doing. I, I actually wanted to finish it. And I got some really good questions from people. And yeah, I think it went really, really well.